Hello, this is Dr. Linda Martinez-Louis. I want to thank you for listening to my podcast. You and I have a relationship of learning, understanding, healing, and recovery. I'd like to talk to you about recovering and healing from the narcissistic spouse's cycle of abuse. For the narcissist, everyone is ultimately disposable and expendable. Since the narcissist is incapable of emotional and psychological intimacy, he or she forms, in quotes, relationships based on the ultimate need for narcissistic supplies, adulation, praise, power and control over others, acquisition, veneration, the validation of greatness. This post refers to both male and female, narcissists covert and overt. Each narcissist has his own unique style. Some are boorish, others low-key, appearing to be humble. The grandiose classic narcissist is highly extroverted and seizes the spotlight at every turn, exceedingly confident, continually singing his own praises at maximum volume. All narcissists are abusive. They are self-absorbed, not tuned in to the needs of others, lack empathy, and project their volcanic rage, especially onto their family members, spouses, ex-spouses, children, siblings, in-laws, etc. There is a cycle of abuse that many narcissistic spouses engage in, beginning with charm, then seduction, then manipulation, exploitation, and then disposal. In my book, Freeing Yourself from the Narcissist in Your Life, I give you the definition of charm. Quote, charm is an energy, a vibration, a contagious, optimistic state of mind. Charm beguiles. It can seduce us to do almost anything. It is a magic elixir that sets us sorry. Close quote. It is very difficult to say no to the magnetism of the narcissist. They are captivating. You feel spellbound, enchanted, taken up with them. In this first phase, you are inclined to believe the narcissist and to feel that you're an integral part of his life, that this person cares deeply about you, loves you. Narcissists are masters of seduction. They know exactly how to get under your skin, your nerves, the heart of an individual whom they have chosen. They cleverly play on our deepest needs to be wanted, worthy, important, and special. We become entranced with them. Narcissists are highly manipulative and exploitive. They are exceedingly cunning and know how to play complex, cruel, calculated games that they have been practicing all their lives with your deepest feelings. They use both charm and intimidation to get you to do and be what they want. You must be perfect like they are. They make sure you never measure up to their standards eventually. When you don't make the grade, you are severely criticized. This emerges into a pattern of continually putting you down. This is after the early stages, of course, when the seduction is taking place. This is done to weaken and control you and force you to doubt your perceptions. Another ploy is the emotional psychological push-pull game. After a major blow-up, the narcissist claims that he or she is sorry and says he needs you desperately. He wants you back into his life, not because he loves you, but due to his need for narcissistic supplies to be adored, obeyed, and praised. 
con constantly and continually. When this sequence is over, he finds a reason to get angry and throw you out of his life. Many victims of narcissistic abuse repeat this pattern over and over again, thinking that the problems arising from the relationship are their fault. Another quote from my book, Freeing Yourself, quote, dismissal or disposal arrives as surely as thunder follows lightning. By this time, you're not even an imprint on his mind. He has moved on to his next glorious quest. Like a speck of swirling dust, the memory of you as a unique individual and the positive magnitude of your good deeds dissolve into the atmosphere as if they never existed, close quote. You no longer fit into the narcissist's grandiose sense of himself. You have not sufficiently fulfilled the overwhelming needs that this person has for you to be perfect, obedient, ever-loving, regardless of his dark cruelties, and available 24-7. You can stop this cycle of narcissistic abuse by first of all, leaving the narcissist with your own plan to regain your sense of a strong, authentic self. Study the narcissistic personality in depth so that you understand these fixed personality traits that absolutely are not inclined to change. And there are many things that you do as you move forward in the recovering and healing and reconstituting and restoring process so that you are living in the true authentic self and have separated out and individuated from your family of origin and thus from the narcissist in your life. And one of the most important things that you can do is to learn how to calm yourself. Because for so many years, you've been in the fight or flight mode with the narcissistic spouse. Now you want to move in to the parasympathetic mode as often as possible. So I want to quote from my recent book, Recovering and Healing, after the narcissist about using the breath and the body to heal. Quote, In the beginning, there was the breath. In Eastern traditions, for thousands of years, the uses of the breath in all of its forms have been studied to understand and change consciousness and enhance deep contemplation. The breath moves through every body system, circulatory, respiratory, endocrine, digestive, excretory. The breath bathes every organ with its healing balm. It gently stretches the voluntary and involuntary muscles of the body, cleanses the blood, and quiets the nervous system. Breathing brings fresh oxygen into the blood that nourishes and revitalizes the entire body, and mind. So this is one of the ways that you heal. Then another aspect of this is learning how to calm the body and mind through diaphragmatic breathing and practicing it regularly, which maintains a consistent feeling of security and steadiness throughout the body, mind, and psyche. Quote, most people breathe high in their chests, which is not engaged the parasympathetic nervous system. Trained opera singers breathe correctly through the diaphragm. Without straining their voices, they reach the back row of any concert hall without a microphone or a sound system. And that's a quote from my book, Recovering and Healing, after the, ex, after the um, narcissist. And then I'm going to quote a little more and talk to you about walking. 
quote, walking is an excellent all around exercise. As you walk, you observe everything at close range. Trees, grasses, wildflowers, sprouting seeds, thick hedges, tangled weeds, mud, flowing water, abandoned spider webs, tiny nets of insects and bird song. With each step, you become more grounded to the earth and gain a sense of stability. So another very vital, close quote, another valuable part of your healing and recovery process is through exercise in a form that works for you. And that could be walking, as I just talked about, stationary cycling, elliptical machines, rowing, climbing, running. All of these release endorphins, which are powerful brain chemicals that boost the immune system and help you to sleep better naturally. They give you tremendous energy and they do help with stabilizing both anxiety and depression. And when you do cardiovascular exercise, you energize the entire body. And it helps to really calm the nervous system and, of course, helps you with sleep. So this is a process, an in-depth process, that you are going through as you reconstitute yourself. Learn how to put yourself first. You've been married to this narcissistic spouse for a long time. And even after you knew that it wasn't working, you stayed with this person, thinking that it would work out. But as you know, it absolutely didn't. And now you are on a really fine road of separating yourself out and reconstituting and restoring your authentic sense of self. So put yourself First, by taking good care each day, resting, sleeping, eating nourishing food, hydrating, and put yourself where you will see beauty, either in nature or through art or through drawing that you do, listening to beautiful music. Music is a way of really transporting us into the parasympathetic system. And uh, so I'm so glad you listened to this podcast, and I look forward to hearing from you again.